Diane, John, Carrie, and there, there we are. We're being recorded. I'm here too, Ray. Oh, oh, hi, Val. Great, great. I can I continue to be amazed when I print out the agenda at how uh, we're cutting through it. I mean, it's basically down to one page. Don't jinx it. I know, I know. I'm, I'm not supposed to say that, but I, it just thrills me. <clears throat> All right, so we have a quorum, so I think we're going to get started. Hello, everyone. Um, welcome to the uh, Historic District Commission, Nantucket Historic District Commission. Uh, let me just uh, run through our dear Governor Baker's uh, ground rules for, for um, Zoom meetings. As a preliminary matter, this is Ray Pohl, Chairman of the Nantucket Historic District Commission. Permit me to confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. So members, when I call your names, if you could please respond in the affirmative. Here we go, Diane Coombs. Aye, here. Thank you, Diane. John McLaughlin. Aye. Very good, very good. Thank you, John Val Oliver. Here. Thank you, Val. And Carrie Thornwell. Here. Great, and Ray Paul for the record. Staff, when I call your names, if you could please also respond in the affirmative. Uh, Kadeem McCarthy. Present. Thank you. Holly Backus. Present. Very good. And, and other anticipated speakers will just uh, be announced as they uh, arrive on the agenda. Uh, good afternoon. This open meeting of the Nantucket Historic District Commission is being conducted remotely pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. This meeting will not feature public comment. For this meeting, the Nantucket Historic District Commission is convening by video conference via the Zoom app as posted on the town's website identifying how the public may join. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and that all attendees are participating by video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that other people may be able to see you and to take care not to screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast can and shall be captured by the recording. All supporting materials that have been provided members of this body are available on the town's website unless otherwise noted. The public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda unless the chair notes otherwise. So before we get to the first item on the agenda, uh, let's go through some ground rules for the effective and clear conduct of our business and to ensure that we're getting accurate meeting minutes. So the chair will in introduce each speaker on the agenda. After they conclude their remarks, the chair will go down the line of members, inviting each by name to provide any comment, questions, or motions. Please hold until your name is called. Further, please remember to mute your phone or computer when you're not speaking. And also please remember to speak clearly and in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. For any response, please wait until the chair, chair yields the floor to you and state your name before speaking. If members wish to engage in a conversation with other members, please do so through the chair, taking care to identify yourself. After the members have spoken, <clears throat> the chair will afford public comment to those members of public. Uh, you know, I realize that this is actually incorrect. It's before members have spoken, the chair will afford public comment to, to members of the public that have joined the meeting via Zoom. That's usually our protocol. Members of the public who wish to speak must state their names and be acknowledged by and speak through the chair. Finally, each vote taken at today's meeting will be conducted via roll call. So that's that. And now I believe Diane, can you give me a motion? Uh, Mr. Chair. Yes. There is a quick change to the agenda. If you, okay. if I can make that. Yes, please. Um, number four under consent is 34 Westchester Street, Hardscape. Yeah, um, yeah. Holly has asked that we move it to consent with conditions, and she has some conditions that she can provide if you would uh, allow her to do so. Yeah, okay. So 
let's all isolate that. So number four is actually going to become a consent with conditions. So our consent agenda today is of three items and <gasps> bless you. Sorry. Goodness. No problem. Um, can I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? Oh, no, sorry, sorry. What we're doing first is we are uh, moving to approve today's somewhat modified agenda. Okay, so I make a motion to approve the agenda with number four on consent going down to consent with conditions. Very good, thank you, Diane. On that motion, John. Hi. Thank you, John. Val. Aye. Carrie. Aye. Diane, on your motion. Aye. And I'm in favor. Motion carries. And uh, Mr. Chair, one other thing. Um, oh. Through you, of course, there does, of course, everyone's welcome to hang out, <laughs> but there does seem to be a lot of members who are here or a lot of participants who are here for um, projects that most likely will not be heard today just because of the hour and a half length of this meeting. Um, yeah. I suspect that we have some individuals here for the trailer at the uh, fire station location, as well as 27 North Liberty Street. There might be others for other applications that certainly or most likely will not be heard today. Kadeem, just, just so that I'm aware, what are the numbers of those? Um, so this is number 25 under new business, Town of oh, yeah, Nantucket. And, Nantucket. Uh, yep, and then I'm suspecting number four, old business as well. Yeah, okay. So folks, um, we don't want to uh, needlessly waste people's time. So there is not a chance that we're even going to get to item number 25 today. I promise you that. Um, this is an hour and a half meeting. We <laughs> will be lucky to get through the Botticelli and pole block up towards the front of the new business agenda. Um, so more realistically, town of Nantucket will be heard on Tuesday if we continue our momentum. And uh, I'm not even going to speak to the old business item because that's beyond that again. So uh, check in again with us on Tuesday night, okay? Uh, but I, for all of those of you who are waiting to hear town of Nantucket at Pleasant Street or uh, 27 North Liberty Street, I would encourage you uh, to check in later. Okay, thanks, Kadeem. Um, now, remind me, let's see, did we get a motion to approve the consent? I, I made a motion to approve the consent <coughs> with change of 34 Westchester Street going down to consent with conditions. Very good, okay, thank you, Diane. On Diane's motion, John. John, I know you're there. How about you, Val? Aye. Very good. Carrie? Aye. Super. John, you there? Hmm. We have some issues with John. He was doing so well there. Um, well, I, Diane, I'm aye. Yeah, Diane, on your motion. You're an aye. aye. Okay, good. And I'm in favor too. So that. Uh, consent was approved uh, four in favor. Up oh, there you are, John. Correct. Yes. Oh, we're having some trouble hearing you, John. John, um, I'll get back to you. So now I'm going to. Oh, I'm going to pass it over. This would be our single consent. What, John? Mm. The bandwidth is a problem. I wish we could help John with his bandwidth. Is that or can he go to his telephone <laughs> and hear and still keep the picture up on now, the Now it's connected. There you go. Whatever yeah. you did worked. OK. So John, we're gonna be doing a consent with conditions, which is actually item number four posted under consent. So we're gonna to listen to what Holly has to say. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The um, condition would be because this is a, obviously the Richard Gardner house, there's a preservation restriction held by Historic New England on this. 
that we would just like to have concurrence from Historic New England that they're okay with these changes. They've done it before for other modifications to this site. Okay. So that would be the condition. The, the with conditions part of this is that, that they would con concur. Yes, sir. Yep. Okay. That seems very reasonable. Um, can I have a motion to approve the consent with conditions at 34 Westchester? Motion to approve. Thank you very much, Diane. On that motion, John. Uh. Still some issues. Val. Aye. Gary. Aye. Diane, on your motion. Aye. And I'm in favor. John, you there? One, one more try. No. Okay. So that covers our consent agenda. Now we are moving right along to new business. Um, do we have Mark Poor on board per chance? I am here. Oh, hello, Mark. Hello, Paul. Nice to not see you, I guess. You're, you're well, we can get in there. <laughs> oh, there is. Okay. Um, okay, Mark. So let's see. Your first application is at 30. Nobody or Ave. And Correct. just so that you know, the board members that are present today are Diane, Val, Carrie, uh, John may or may not be on this. We'll see. And then, of, of course, me. So, me. Uh, why don't you, uh, oh, Stephen, you've joined us. Okay. So, for the record, Stephen Welch has just joined. Oh, I've been here hours, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> it seems like it. Okay. Uh, all right. So let's see. Hey, before Mark, sorry for all the red tape, but um, John is having issues with his uh, Zoom connection. Okay. So I'm going to ask. John, are you there? See, I'm not hearing John. And so in fairness to you, what I wanna do is I wanna have your board be myself, Diane, Val, Stephen, and Carrie. Then you have a five person board. I okay. thank you for that. All right, so continue. If I may, I'd, I'd like you to scroll down to the photographs that are at the end of the presentation materials so that you have a very clear indication of what this house looks like today. Idea. Yep. In addition to that, um, research has shown that this house was constructed in the 1990s. Okay. It's something of an oddity by the standards that are being applied today. Uh, the owner uh, likes some of those oddities mm -hmm. and the intent here is to expand out the back of the house in order to take the very, very cramped living room, dining room and kitchen and push it out. And in, do in doing so, uh, expand the ridge line so it looks more appropriate in the direction it's going in. Okay. Add a dormer and swap out the windows that uh, have been pretty battered over the course of time sitting there on the ocean. Mm -hmm. uh, in addition, you, you'll notice that a number of the shingled boxed corners around the decks that were, I assume, meant for windbreaks uh, in this design, I'm only speculating, uh, have been removed in favor of just a more traditional railing system supported on columns. Uh, we made some other minor changes uh, to the shape on the front of the building uh, and, and taken off the chimney that was falling off the roof at that point in time. So I'm welcome to go through all the elevations and discuss the nuances of them. Okay. Um... This looks pretty straightforward. So I'll open it up to the board. Who would like to start any comments, questions from the board? I will. Yes, thank you, Val. I think Mark's done a nice job of keeping the quirk of the house and um, expanding it to meet his um, client's criteria. It's, it's 
uh, appropriate. Okay. Thank you. Uh, who's next? I'll go. Okay. Oh, Carrie, go ahead. Yeah, I agree with um, Val. You're going from one over one windows to two over two, correct? There are uh, the bulk of the casement, I mean, excuse me, double hung windows are two over two. They are, okay. In photographs. So you're, you're going to double that. hung. Is that right? Yes. Okay. They are double hung now and they will continue to be double hung. Got it. And then you mentioned columns on the porch. Do, do you mean square posts or round columns? Are they? No, it would, it would be square posts. Right now, the posts are, uh, that are exposed are four by four. We're going to encase them and make them larger. Got it. So that they're more appropriate for the spans. Got it. But the idea is we're going to uh, remove the, the corners that are shingled all the way up to the railing height that have the scuppers in them. So it just becomes a little bit more open and airy. Yeah, I have no problem with this. Okay, thanks, Carrie. Mm -hmm. Diane? Yeah, can I just, do you have a site plan? Yes, it should be on the first two pages. And you'll see where the bulk yeah, of the work is being done on the back of the building, which is the north side. Okay, that's what I wanted to see. I don't want the stuff going in the back. I think the back right now is kind of dreary. <laughs> so putting that widening it and putting in more room, I think is good. Uh, I have no problem with it. I think that it answers the question nicely and I appreciate the work you've done on it. Thank you. Great. Thank you. And let's see, Stephen, I think it's to you, friend. Yeah, uh, I had heard that orange was the new black and quirky is the new orange. So I'm good with that. <laughs> um, well, Mark, I think you, uh, you have this one. Uh, we'll put it to a vote. Can somebody give me a motion? I make a motion to approve as submitted. Sounds good. Thanks, Diane. On that motion, Val. Aye. Steven. Aye. Harry. Aye. Diane, on your motion. Aye. I'm in favor. Motion carries. Chairman. That's one down. You got one left. Thank you. 28 Easton. Ray, was I on this? Uh, oh, so John, if you're there now and I can hear you, you can be on this application, which is number two. Okay? Okay. Yeah. You, you're sounding no, good. No problem. I'll pass on it. What what did you say? I got a little Uh oh, um, you're breaking up again. Twenty eight Easton Street, am I right? Uh, yeah, yeah twenty eight Easton Street, uh, the old Fairchild House. Um, okay. Okay, I want to make sure that we can hear you, John. It sounds like you can. So let's try and move forward with John, which would mean that uh, let's do Carrie and John, uh, Val, Diane, myself. Um, okay, Mark, go ahead. Uh, just a little history on this project. Uh, back in 1990, this building was completely renovated uh, through Gwen Thorson's office. In addition, he built the two buildings that are currently closer to the street to emulate the construction. I met with uh, Doug Collitz, a Brant Point builder there a few weeks back, and we were starting to look at all the debilitating trim details and the, and the brutality that this form has taken over those 30 years. The concept here is a like kind of placement concept with the same materials same single glazed window components in the same openings. Uh, really just trying to make this house more weathertight after sagging on the, on the harbor front for 30 years. So, so the, draw, the drawings you're looking at are the original drawings that were done by Gwen Thorson back in the day. Mm -hmm. So the only thing that I presented are photographs and any supplementary information. Okay. Um, thanks, Mark. I think we all know this building quite well. 
Um, Holly, what uh, do you and, and HSAB have to say about this? Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. So um, first off, there was no historic information in that. Turn it up a little bit. Packet. That's what I was looking for. It should be down here someplace. Hang However, um, the HDC, HDC survey, excuse me, um, indicates from 1938. Mm -hmm. uh, NHL data indicates early 1900. So it sounds like if the, this original structure was renovated back in the 90s. Again, that information would have been a little bit helpful because HSAB, when they reviewed it, they were laying on the fact that the property card, which we don't go by, said it was built in the 1990s, which obviously is incorrect. It was obviously uh, renovated substantially. Yeah. Um, however, obviously with the window replacements within the old historic district, a window survey would be very in, uh, helpful to know, to discern which ones are from the original 1938 structure and which ones were um, actually from the 1990s uh, renovation. So those are my comments. And thank, you, thank you, Holly. Yes, sir. Was that, was that HSAB or was that you or both? Well, that was both because HSAB was leaning on the fact that this structure was built in 1990, which we know was renovated that's, in 1990. That's certainly not true. But one Correct. thing, I, I have been through this house um, at least once, maybe more. And I will tell you that all of the windows uh, were replaced back in that renovation that took place in the 90s. They're all like Bosco windows. So, um, there are no old windows left in this house. I agree. Are they in bad shape? Well, so the, the, the reno took place in 1990, which, you know, actually I was around on Nantucket when they were doing this work, which doesn't, <laughs> doesn't seem like that long ago, but it was. And as we all know, like down there on Brant Point, everything gets hit by that wind and the salt air. And so Brasco windows, which were, you know, totally fine windows, I'm sure are a complete mess at this point. Um, so that's just my own, you know, personal opinion, but you know, those windows are 30 years old. Um, so I think that to replace them would not be a, a hardship uh, in terms of the historic fabric. Hopefully I answered that properly. Um, so who would like to start on this one? Can I I'll ask go. Uh, 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 wait, did somebody say, can I ask a question? I did, it's Carrie. Oh yes, Carrie. I'm just wondering to Mark, um, what manufacturer are you gonna replace them with? Carrie, apparently from speaking with Doug Collins at Brand Point Marine, they are going to have Brasco make them a mahogany window. Oh, great. Oh, sounds good to me. Yeah, much better than the than the pine. Yeah, I have no problem with this. Okay, great. I'll go. Uh, go ahead, Diane. I think it. I think that it will be a good thing if it was done in 1990, and and unfortunately they didn't hold hold up any longer. But I think the mahogany's will be good, 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 and they'll have the same uh, mold, mold shape, mold. Uh, trying to say so they fit in and I think I would approve it great okay thanks Diane uh let's see Carrie spoken Val I'm okay with it all right sounds good John are you there I'm right here okay so how do you feel about replacing these right. windows? I'm right. yep go ahead John Oh boy. Just say it quick. Say quick, quick. Well, no, he's having, he's probably talking, but the, the bandwidth is not allowing us to hear what he's saying, which is really frustrating for, for him, I'm sure, and for us as well. John, oh, there, was that you? Oh. Okay, I think we're gonna to have to move forward because there seems to be, well, doesn't seem to be, there is a consensus view that, that what Mark is doing here is, is uh, perfectly approvable. So- um, Make a motion to approve or submit it. 
Very good. Thank you, Diane. Um, so on that motion, Carrie. Aye. Val. Aye. Diane, on your motion. Aye. John, a try. John. No, and I'm in favor. So, oh, there you are. Um, the motion did carry four in favor. Ray, I asked a question, point of order, okay? I asked Nobody a can hear you. Oh, we can't hear you, friend. We can't hear you. It's just... Oh, but where are we going now? Wait, okay. Well, unfortunately, we can hear you, like, now, but we couldn't hear you three minutes ago. John? Here we go. Another day in the profile. Oh. We, we got to get an IT person over to John's house. <laughs> Somehow. Um, okay, Mark, thank you. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it very much. Yeah, we'll talk to you later. Nice seeing you. Uh, okay, so moving along to uh, 11 North Mill. Do we have Chip or someone to represent this? Uh, hey, I'm here. Um, just, can you hear me? Yes. It looks like the camera is not going. There it goes. Okay. Hi, Amy. Hey. Okay, Amy, before we begin, as I'm sure you've noticed, uh, we're having some technical difficulties mm -hmm. on. Um, I'm going to give it another try here, uh, but no matter what, we'll have Steven sit on this. Uh, John? I'm here. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah, I see you, but, but we're having trouble hearing you. That's the big issue. Uh, right. My question is this. This yeah. is the application for Mueller. Is this a trim color only? Well, I don't know, but John, I just heard what you said, which is good news. So Amy, tell us what you're doing. Uh, so it's trim, a trim color change. Currently it's um, like a yellowish white color and they'd like to swap that out for a Quaker gray. In addition to swapping out a few doors and windows. Um, the windows that are being changed are not historic. They are part of the newer edition that was done, I think, around the 80s, um, but I'm not sure. Okay, you have drawings of what's being changed. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. so it's just that, uh, yeah, we can go through the elevations if you'd like. That's what we need to do. All right, so it looks like you're doing a double mm -hmm. on the southwest. Oh, plus changing that door. Okay, got that, right? Nothing on the Northeast. Oh no, sorry. Yes, changing that, all right. The door there, okay, very good. And, and those three windows we're just shifting over. Um, they're doing an interior renovation um, and they're just sliding over slightly. And it looks like one window is being swapped out. So sorry, two of them are just shifting over. And one is just going over and being made smaller. Yeah, yep. Okay. Amy, thank you. Um, so, uh, Holly. Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, so this did not go to HSAB, so you've got comments from me. Just remind right. the commission that this is originally 34 Prospect Street, now mm -hmm. 11 North Mill. Um, with the Mueller subdivision that was done. In Lancaster, it's listed as number 30. And remember that this was assembled from parts of three buildings by four uh, Richard Emerson. Timbers actually came from the Jeremiah Coleman 1745 house and two houses converted um, from barns, up, actually from Upper Main Street and the other from a property off a cliff. I just think that's important to remember that this structure was Re, re, you know, combined with other structures in, in the 1930s to emulate that type of architecture. Just doing America. those very simple renderings. Lisa. <laughs> um, as far as comments on the Southwest and Northeast uh, elevations, I would recommend to keep the eight over 12, um, gain, those gained windows, I believe. Kadima, if you can go to that elevation, please. And then the, the, the proposed 
12 light one panel door is not appropriate for this vintage uh, architecture. Those are my comments, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Okay, the 12 light one panel being on the northeast elevation, right? Yes, sir. Yep. Okay. Right. <laughs> oh, all right. Um, okay, John, you want to start? Uh, if what I see here is is that's all they want is these window changes? Yes. Am I correct? Yes, that's correct. And, I, and, a, and a color change. I'm sorry, John. A color change as well. Okay. I, I think what's there is applicable for approval. Fine. Okay. Not that much change. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, John. Could you go? Oh, wait a minute, Ray. Could you we go up three clicks, please? I want to look at something. Well, why can't we just stay on three clicks where right? I can understand it? All right. Go ahead, John. Uh, the one door on the far right. Yeah. Decided this is the. All right. Yeah. That door is it. It's, it's the panel in the bottom on the right. Yes. That door right there, that's one of them. There's two of them, I think. First. There's one on the back, too. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Anything else, John? No, other than that, if that's the wooden panel, that's fine. Um, I, he needs a motion to approve. Well, let's it matches the rest of the house. Hold, hold on, John. Hold on the motion. Um, I just I want to hear from the other I, member. Go I ahead. would go. Yes, please. Go ahead. I think that the door that they are proposing into that three, six, nine, twelve glass door should that is on the original front of the building i think it should go back to what it was and not that glass and i think the same thing on the back because it is also on faced with the original building that yeah that i think that six light is more appropriate than the 12 light that's the that's the front of the building those Windows, I've been here since 1972, 1965 is when I came. And those windows were there in 1965, and I'm sure they were there before. And I think that is historically what the building is and was. And so the windows, the doors should be kept the same. That's all. Thank you, Diane. Uh, Stephen? Uh, yeah, thanks, Mr. Chair. I, I don't have a concern with the windows. Uh, I do have a concern with the door, at least with respect to facing prospect. And um, I'd like to see some options. Okay. Thank you. All right, great. Thank you, Stephen. Val? I concur. About the door? Yeah, it's the only thing that is uh, not fitting in with the rest of the structure. On the rear, they're blocked by trees. I'm not as concerned. It's the face of it facing prospect. So I have an idea. <clears throat> how, about, how about we uh, get a motion to approve this, but without changing the door on uh, whatever the front elevation is, the orientation of that is. So moved. South. Uh, southwest elevation. Okay, so Stephen's motion is to approve this as submitted with the exception of the door on the northwest. Did I say that correct? Southwest. Southwest elevation will remain the way it is. Okay, that was Stephen's motion. On that motion, Diane. Aye. Thank you, Diane Val. Aye. Okay, John. I'll try again, Stephen, on your motion. Aye. Okay, I'm in favor, and I'm gonna try John again. No John, but you still get it. It was, 
what? John? Oh, boy. Can't hear him. He, he no. voted aye. He said oh. he voted aye. Okay. All right. Uh, Diane, Diane, who's very good at this, uh, says that John voted aye. So that means we've got five in favor. Motion carries. Thank you very much. Um, and now we are going to get along to eight North Gully. No, 106 Surfside. Oh, shoot. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry, but uh, I, I'm ahead of myself here. 106 Surfside, yes. Do we have somebody to rep? No, Josiah Newman. How is everyone? Hi there. How's it going? Good. How are you? Good, thanks. Um, okay, so Carrie is going to be on this definitely. Let me check in and see if John's still there. John, are you there? Mr. Oh, sorry, never mind. I thought he had closed out. Is he here? Uh, he is here and he is moving currently, Mr. Chair. He's moving. Uh, <laughs> well, Mr. Chair. Um, yeah. Uh, I'd like to exercise a point of order. Um, I think, and this is not in no way a reflection on John, we would make a decision at some point to cut the cord if we're having a problem with a member until they can come up with a reliable way to sign in at, at a particular meeting. Because this is... I hate Again, this is not a reflection on John, but we've got an hour and a half and this is very painful. Yeah, okay, I, I'm with you. So John, if you heard that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna continue with Steven on this and Carrie, um, because we're having incredible difficulties hearing you. Um, so, huh, Josiah, uh, hated to do that, but so there's your board, so continue. Okay. Uh, 106 Surfside, there's uh, there's two 106s. There's an east and a west. This is 106 West. Uh, existing house, existing uh, pool house, and an existing garage, except the garage, the second floor of the garage is unfinished. So we're going we're gonna to utilize it and make a studio office space for the client up there. And he'd like to add this second floor deck coming off of uh, the, I believe it's the north elevation. And there's an existing window there on the second floor. We're going to change out to a door to match the door that's on the existing east elevation. Okay. Uh, underneath the deck, there's a little shower enclosure off the back side of the garage as well, centered on the gable. Yep. Okay, so I think the important thing here, we should go back to the site plan. Well, I want something better than that that was going to show me where this deck appendage is vis-a-vis -vis Surfside Road. You're getting closer. There. Yeah, right there. there. There we go. Okay, so let's, there we, perfect. Okay, so to, to put it simply, this is on the back of the structure with Correct. respect to Surfside Road. Correct. Okay, thank you. All right, who would like to start? I would, Mr. Chair, because I have a question. Yeah, go ahead, Stephen. Uh, through you, of course. Uh, Josiah, on your uh, sheet A1, uh, I, I believe we're looking at the second floor plan, is that correct? Correct. And I don't see a first floor plan. It's just an open garage bay. Okay, and well, what about the structure itself? Is that is the area underneath the second floor covered porch? It appears that that's not just it's becoming enclosed. Only for the outdoor shower area. Okay, because it's enclosed. Okay, it's a little confusing in that one elevation that shows. I'm not sure if there's a vertical corner board or a a very thin tall post that you're going to want to revise to a six by six. Um, yeah, that lower right hand corner yeah that was just where the landing of the stair come comes down i did it's one by six um enclosed just at the landing um detail purposes but i I'm happy to change that if you want yeah no i just was looking for clarity um i have uh mr chair have no concerns thank you okay. thank you Stephen. carrie yeah i think the visibility of this gives me no concerns either yeah that's right okay diane my, my only question would be, 
the length of the, of the deck on the second floor, the first part is 7.1 and the other is three foot six. That's the stair. And the yeah. stair, but the stair could move over, couldn't it, and come down? So, and so that's not out 10 feet? That's just the landing in the stair that's sticking out. I know that. Right. I can see that. I just wondered if it could move over so you would have an eight foot deck and then the stairs would come down at the end of the eight feet and the whole thing move in closer to the house. I don't think you could accomplish that um, because your eight foot deck, which is the seven foot one and a quarter dimension, if you move the stair into that, then it wouldn't be an eight foot deck anymore, if I understood you correctly. No. No. Okay. I don't know why, because if you move the stairs over, they just, you walk off the deck down the stairs. But if you don't, if nobody cares, if they're sticking out that far, it's fine. I don't. I, I think that, I think that we're not going to actually see this from Surfside Road, honestly. So, you know, what but other might be a concern is is not for me anyway that's all okay thanks diane um did i get you val no i don't have any concerns given its location okay. on the structure i think we have lift off so um can somebody give a motion for me motion to approve okay thanks val's just made a motion to approve is submitted on that motion stephen Aye. Thank you, Carrie. Aye. Very good, Diane. Aye. Thank you, Val, on your motion. Aye. I'm in favor, so motion carries. Thank you. Mr. Oh, Chair, can I step out here. for five? Yeah. Okay. Um, Thank you all very much. Oh, yeah, thanks. Uh, take care. All right, so let's see. Matt, you there? I am, Mr. Chair. Okay, so as you know, Val just stepped out, and and we have we're having rather severe te technical difficulties with John. Yes. So you have a four person board at the moment. Are you going to be okay with that? You think? Um, you know, I actually, if it's okay with you, I, could I go to Tuesday just? Um, just so I can maintain a consistent board. I'm less concerned, I guess, about this one, but the Chestnut Street one, I feel like we had the same well, let's board. Move forward, let's move forward with this one then, okay? Okay, cool. Because then we're gonna run into some severe uh, deficiency issues with the ones below yours, if you yes. know what I mean, a board yes. of three. So, and this looks like you're just adding a dormer, right? Yep. Yeah, so that's exactly it. Uh, it's an existing structure um, and there is an existing shed dormer in its place you can see um, the uh, on sheet uh, A10, sorry, 201, um, the existing south elevation compared to the proposed south elevation, which is drawing one. And so it's um, uh, basically just trying to uh, get a bathroom on the second floor. Really, that's the only change. Uh, we tried to maintain the same window style and size. It kind of works. So um, with that, look forward to comments from the board, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Okay, where is this? It's in Codfish Park. Figured. And do we have photographs of the building? Uh, we should in the file. And I will have- Mr. All. Chair, we do not have photographs. I'm, I apologize for that. We, uh, uh, we normally do have them in there, so. No. Nope. I can do a- uh, Screen share? You think so, yeah. yeah. Uh, feel free. One second. Hmm. Mr. Chair, I do have comments from Sam. Yeah, no, no, I'll definitely get to you. I just wanted to get yep. to have the board familiarize themselves with the actual building and the context. One second here. You know, it might take me a few minutes to pull those up. So I apologize. Um, it'll take me a few minutes to pull those up if you want to continue or if you want to push it to Tuesday. I apologize. I'm not sure why we don't have the photographs. Let's see. Uh, oh, there it is. There's, there's one photograph. 
why don't we hear to, why don't we hear what uh, Holly has to say? Sure. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So as you can see, the HDC survey before you um, actually does not have a date, but on the form it does indicate that it's contributing. I mentioned that because the NHL data indicates 1976. I'm thinking it is uh, contributing, but it maybe had a renovation back in the 70s. So that's why we have that date there. I'm just assuming, speculating that historical information would obviously have been very helpful. Eight, uh, Sconce Advisory did look at this on September 13th. Their concerns are that the dormer is too big for what it is and it appears out of scale and top heavy for the rest of the house. They have a suggestion to create a reverse gable or a shed dormer to make it less imposing. And I would concur that a shed dormer would be more appropriate for the um, dormer configuration, Mr. Well, Chair. What's, Thank what's you. A reverse gable. Did, did you say reverse Much, gable? That's what they wrote in their comments. Yes, sir. <laughs> Something cool we don't even know about. Is any <laughs> anybody? Yeah. I, um, I'll go. I'd like to go, Mr. Chair. Oh, all right. Well, I'll do Stephen. Go ahead, Stephen. Uh, I'd like to motion for a view and images. Oh, there you go. Well, there's there are images. Oh, we got the images. I'd still like to motion for a view because my comments are going to be based contextually on what's I, immediately adjacent to it due to the nature of the neighborhood. So it's up to you, but. Well, well, so let's hold that motion for a second. Diane, you were about to say something. Yeah, I think that the that that a dormer is inappropriate in its size. Uh, we've gone through this. It shouldn't take up the whole thing of the of the broken back coming down. It is it is too big. I don't know what a reverse dormer is, but it would be better than what's up there. I, that's too big. Okay, thanks. Uh, let's see, Carrie. Um, I'm not adverse to a gable dormer, um, but I do think on that east elevation, it's coming out so far, it's overwhelming. Um, yeah, it's overwhelming that second floor, the simplicity of it. Um, so. Okay. Um, Thank you. And so I think you got a couple of choices here. First of all, I'd be in favor of a view for context. Second of all, I think that if this stays as a gable, it's too big. I agree with Sconset Advisory on that. Interestingly, you do have a shed dormer like right next to it. Now that is a flush shed dormer, which mm -hmm. is arguably also too big. But I think your choices are either reduce down the size of the gable or go with a shed uh, so that it's more a sort of... Uh, grounded than a gable which you know tends to accentuate the verticality mm -hmm. those are my comments um okay. so should we hold this for for view plus some revision yes i make a motion to hold for a view and revisions that sounds great thank you diane on that motion uh steven i'm an eye on my motion and diane's oh how did oh that's right yes you did make them oh, yes okay carrie Aye. And Diane, on your motion? On um, both of ours, yes. Okay, and I'm in favor too, so that motion carries. Great, thank you. All right, um, now, so let's see if Val's back. No. I was gonna suggest if this one, I think I'm looking yes. at- Yes. Oh, Val's back. But I think I'm missing John. Yeah. Well, you're missing- And Abby. You're missing yeah. John. You're missing John, but you do have a five-person board now. Uh, no, not to existing. Yeah, I think I'm missing John and Abby. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, yeah. Right. It's been heard before. Okay. If I can hold it till Tuesday. Hold this. That'd be great. Yeah, no, you don't want. You don't want to do three people on that. No way. Person um, board. Okay. So. Motion to, we, do we need a motion or do we, yeah, actually, cause it's gonna be on a Tuesday. So I, I make a motion to uh, pick this up Tuesday. Sounds good. Um, so that would be with the three people that are actually sitting here on this application. So Diane on Steven's motion. Aye. Steven on your motion. Aye. 
Ray on uh, Stephen's motion, aye. Um, so that motion carries. We'll see you on Tuesday. Thank you very much. I'll let you know when I find out about a reverse gable. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'll check that one out. Um, okay. Now, let's see. Lisa was on a moment ago. I'm here. Unmuted. Oh, there you go. So, Lisa, just FYI, John was having technical difficulties. So, you have four people. You have so Diane, what, Val, Stephen, and Carrie. So it's you, up to you to decide uh, what you want to do in the various ones. But I'm good. Um, so Diane, can I turn it over to you for a little while? Yep, no problem. Okay, thank you. I'm going to mute. So, uh, Lisa, what do you want to do with 31 Low Beach Road? Do you want to go on or or hold it? Um, I, I I think I want to go on. Um, I, I just to introduce the the concept. I, I think there's some um, questions about the age of. There, there's just some question historic questions that on this on this property. So I think it's worth you know talking about it. No no problem. So you start. Yep. So, uh, and Holly can fill you in as well. I went to HSAB or SAB about this. I believe it's Wisconsin Advisory Board. The building is um, definitely older and shows up. And there is a um, there was an image that had been submitted by the Preservation Trust that shows a building there. But I don't. If it's the same building, it's been significantly altered. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, the roof, the roof, the eave height is much higher, the steep, the roof pitch is much steeper. Um, so I'm not exactly sure what the generation of this structure is. There wasn't a building in that location that were, that's currently where it could, this other roof currently or other building currently stands definitely in the forties. I just don't know if it was this structure or a different structure that got moved on, or if it was this structure and then it got completely modified and the roof changed. So the, um, the nature of this project is that originally we were gonna keep that building in the front and build a guest house kind of midway through the property. Um, what the client is now wanting to do is to take the main box of that structure and move it to the back of the property and turn it into, you know, a more typical garage that would be behind a main house. So rather than trying to modify this building to the degree that it would need to be modified to make this the main house, the concept was to relocate it to the rear of the property and turn it into a guest house studio, not a guest house, like a, a garage studio. Um, and so there was discussion about, I, I don't know where to find more information about the age of the building. We looked at aerials and yes, a building shows up there, but again, it, this looks so different from the photo that was submitted by the Preservation Trust. I don't, there's no way of knowing if it's the same building it had been severely modified or if it's a new, a different building that happens. Uh, my guess is it's that building, but it was severely modified. It was a new roof was built. They were added the rear L, you know, they did all this stuff to it, but it's, you know, maybe the first floor walls are the same, but that's about it. Is there a foundation on the house now? Uh, that is a good question. I have to look at the. No. No, thank you, Ray. <laughs> the photographs show no foundation either of the old building. Yeah. So it looks like they must have modified it. They just modified it so much. I mean, you can't, you know, the roof pitch has a, I think it's a 12 and 12 is so severe now. And it was clearly much lower in the original photo. Yeah. So uh, that is what we're proposing to do. We would be coming back with revisions to the house in the front. Um, but it did, just didn't make any sense for the client to try to utilize this as a main house and then build a pretty significant guest house. It okay. made more sense for them to turn this into sort of a, a garage studio and or, or guest house and then, you know, have a main house in front of it. And that's okay. what the proposal's for. Let's see what uh, Shab says. i just ask you, now is what is the height of the building? Uh, the existing height is not changing. I can I can look. Can you blow that up, Holly? I can't. 
I can't read it either. I can't read it. Kadeem running today. Oh, I'm sorry, Kadeem. <laughs> I never know who's driving the bus. Uh, it, it, 27 nine. feet nine. So it would have to come down a little. All right, let's get to see what Sam has to say. Okay, Holly? Thank you, Madam Chair. So yes, the age of the structure and the history of the structure is, is very important. It obviously is contributing. So let's just, you know, say that. Um, the HDC survey indicates uh, circa uh, 1938 as a Victorian eclectic bungalow. Um, hmm. So obviously, um, you know, looking back at the documentation that um, NPT provided, they urge, as well as I would urge, for additional historic information, and they can be very helpful in that regards. Based on the um, documents that they did give us and the brief little um, deed research that was done on their behalf, um, this, this structure goes back to um, Florence Coffin Clark um, and Charles F. Coffin. So, of course, this had, and they were instrumental in the um, development of that area of, um, of Sconset back in during the, the platting of Low Beach area. Um, so, you know, one could discern that the photo that was provided from, I believe 19, that one right there, about 1900, you know, yes, it's absolutely um, possible that the structure that we see before us today changed from 1900 to 1938. Um, but nonetheless, this is a contributing structure and more historic information um, should be provided. My concerns would be the age also of the um, L that's being proposed to be demolished. Um, what, what is the age of that? Um, and then obviously, um, I'm, I always stress this, if the commission does allow this to be um, moved and demolished, then obviously we would want to have um, this history being documented, um, that especially that part that's being removed. And again, you're changing the technically the, the use from this as a dwelling to a garage, and that's something substantial yes. as well. Those are the comments, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Holly. Holly, who wants to start? Val? Oh, uh, it's Carrie. I'll go. Oh, okay. That's Come okay. On, that's um, good. I I love this little building. It's a weird little building. And I feel like while well, you've done a good job at what you're trying to do. It's so iconic on that street. I would hate to see it go hiding in the in the back. Um, and if if programmatically you need to change it to a garage, I could see that being very sensitive to the existing, but I could see it in the existing location. So we don't lose this weird, funky, awesome building that's there now. Thank you. Uh, Val, are you here, back? Yeah. Um, is the is the main house already approved and built? No, that's not built yet. The main okay. house, what was going to be the guest house, was approved. It would definitely have to come back for revisions. So the building that shows up on the site plan was approved. And that was the guest house? That was going to be the guest house. Oh. See, so that's why I think they're thinking that rather than trying to modify this existing building enough to make it their main house, that it would make more sense to, to you know, change the use of it slightly and then actually build a main house. Well, it's not slight, the garage. Um, okay. I'm still a little confused. I'm so sorry. Um, so that just is a footprint that you put there. It's nothing that we've looked at before. No, that's been oh. approved. Okay. The one in the middle? Yeah. That has been approved. But it might change that. because it, as they develop it into their own dwelling unit, as opposed to a guest house, it might be modified. You would have more program in it because it was originally going to be a guest house. Okay. M Madam Chair, that, yeah. yes, I to interrupt, oh. but um, I did not look at the NHL data previously. And NHL data indicates that 31 Low Beach Road is 1863. It does have a notation that there's lots of additions. So that should give a, um, an idea that, of the vintage. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Stephen? 
Uh, thanks, Madam Chair. Uh, I agree with Carrie. All right. I and I don't think it should be changed. I'm sorry. I think that it is a building going to, back to 1850. I don't think making a house residence into a garage. It may have something on the top, but it's basically it's called a garage. I think that is difficult, and I think it's one of an existing building that's been in Sconset for that length of time, and I think it should be preserved. Uh, you can move it back, but I would keep it in its shape. Um, so what- You're not opposed to moving it back, you're opposed to changing it into a garage. I'm opposed to changing it into a garage. Uh, you could move it back because it's within the property lot, property, but to change it, it's just something else other than the, the building it is, I would be against. So okay. can we get a motion? Uh, uh, I'm sorry, Val, did you have any comments? I'm sorry, you were No, because I'm still confused, but I'll go back and look at the file. Um, okay. Just so I can understand instead of holding everybody up now. Okay. But do you want to make a motion for uh, to hold for more information? And then it would be give everybody some time to double check it. Sure. So moved. Okay, thank you. Uh, Carrie? Aye. Val? Aye. Stephen? Aye. And I'm an aye, too. Um, Madam Chair, through you, I'm just curious when you are expecting this to be back on the agenda. I think, can we do it on Tuesday? We should do it on Tuesday or Thursday, if Lisa has a choice. Uh, oh, sorry, Kadeem, go ahead. Oh, no, Lisa, up to you. Tuesday or Thursday would work just fine. I mean, I guess we can put it on for Tuesday. Um, I don't know if I can get any historic information, enough more research done. I mean, we've started to look. We couldn't find much more. Uh, but if you put it on for Tuesday and we're not ready, we'll just push it off to Thursday. Uh, sounds okay. good. I'll add it to the view list and put it on for Tuesday. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. All right, listen, we now have 20 Orange Street. Okay, so th edition. this is, and I, I might want to um, share my screen only from the perspective of this is the building that I had a photo of. Um, let's see, can I share my screen just briefly? Yes, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Uh, this is the building that we looked at that you can see from. Oh. The water, t the water tower, or the water uh, down by the um, old gas tanks. This is that structure right here that we're coming in for revisions on. We had made changes to the house with the fenestrations previously, and it's this building that we're actually asking to um, add a small addition onto it, uh, change the windows on this side, and then um, add. Um, a, a second leaf of a door here that would be kind of behind that chimney as taken from this picture. So those are the changes. I just wanted to give you that context. So I don't need to stop. I don't need to share anymore unless somebody wants to go back and look at that picture. We've seen that many, many times. <laughs> yes. Yes, for 20 Orange Street and for 22. So let's see what you've got. So it's the main structure of the building is remaining. And it's just a little shed, broken back uh, shed addition on the um, yard side of the building. And so we're changing the triple uh, 12 over 12 windows to um, four, four over four windows. And then um, just adding a door on the elevation that faces, um, I think it's east. Okay. That's it. All righty. Uh, do, Holly, do we have any remarks? Yes, Madam Chair. Very simple. Um, this is the cottage that uh, circa 1977 that's associated with the typical Nantucket uh, from circa 1800 for John Beard. Um, the only comment that we have is that we would prefer to retain and reuse that triple 12 over 12 window unit as um, in the proposed addition. 
So if you look at the existing north elevation, that unit right there, yeah, um, and pop that out in into the addition. And those are the comments, Madam Chair. And the only yes. reason that we weren't doing that, if I could be, um, and I could share my screen and show you the main house, is the main house. Uh, we've taken those windows out of the main house, and um, hold on a second, and changed them all to larger openings. So. Um, hold on, I have to go to, I'll just pull up the approval. We reviewed this a while ago, didn't we? Yeah. It allowed the windows to be changed out to. That's right. And because they face the side, it seems like, you know, so we're just taking this window type and using that on that building, which seems logical to me, rather than again, go back to a very, what I find to be a very, very busy elevation of these small pane sizes. So that was the rationale for the change. I felt like it just worked better with the new approved. Rear so all those, all those multi pane windows are gone from the-, from gone. the We're trying to, uh, the, we're retaining those in, in the front part of the house where it's obviously yeah. facing Orange Street and the side that faces, uh, where, where am I going? Sorry, I'm not a very good driver. Um, the side that faces up orange, they're being retained but, there. But for the cottage or the shed or whatever yeah. you call it, that's down and back. So it's, it would be hard to be seen from most places on Orange Street, right? Yeah. Oh, impossible to be seen on Orange Street uh, at a huge distance from, again, that shot down by Commercial Wharf. Yeah, um, and, and again, it's it's in more in keeping with the architecture of the rear of the house uh -huh. now. Okay, all right. Let's see what somebody has to say. Val, I okay with it given its visibility from everywhere. My only question is, and Lisa, you may have just said this: Are those original windows you're trying to reuse, or they're just windows that were in the house? Which ones, the four? The, the old ones, the 12 over 12. The, those exist right now and they exist in the main house now, but we have approval to remove them all and turn them to more open window panes. Yeah. I'm okay with it. Okay, Carrie? Uh, I'm okay with this too. Steven? Uh, I'm where Val was on the last one. Uh, can we pull it? <laughs> Lisa, will you pull up that picture that you showed us with the the rainbow of colors on the back oh, of the yeah, house? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Madam Chair, through you, I just want to be sure that Lisa submits that photo for us. Oh, I, in the yeah, file. I'll email Maybe. it immediately. Um, okay, so originally, I guess my question is, it's the the lower left yellow that's, that's right. what we're discussing. Yes nothing on the other yellow red or green no the other yellow was the drawing i pulled up Stephen, and that's what was approved on this house this cottage okay so those were just house. i'm sorry those were just for context yeah that yeah. was just that was just me trying to outline the other buildings so you could see the difference between 22 and 20 and what's across the street because it, okay. they, they tend to blend together as to one piece of architecture Thank you, because I went, I, I saw it was shed and then I went to look and after I saw this and I was confused. Okay, yeah. so, and there's no, there's actually no height difference in the exist, uh, existing versus, the proposed versus no, the existing. No, no, the only addition is to add the shed to get a little bit more um, floor area. Okay, um, I, I appreciate that comments about keeping, using the 12 or 12, but I also understand, you, you know, converting over to what's used in the, um, the existing main house. So I'm fine with it as proposed. All right, thank you. Um, I have seen this many, many times and I don't think that you're going to see it even if you catch it in your eye, the plastic is such whatever that it's not going to be a, uh, a noticeable thing. The only thing I might ask and it might come up is to uh, hold on to those old windows. Well, they're not, they're not old in the sense that they're antique. They're just pre-existing. Mm -hmm. 
they're not they're not old old then. No, 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 no. They're not okay. old old. All right. Then can I get a motion for Lisa on the approval of the window change in motion to approve as submitted. Thank you very much. Uh, Val. Aye. Steve. Aye. Carrie. Aye. And I'm an aye. So you're all set. The next is H. Wallbang. Okay, so this is, the one is a move slash demo of an existing house. Um, Madam Chair, we're having a little bit of technical difficulty, so I'm just going to stop sharing and I'll be right back in. Okay. Okay, and in the meantime, Kadeem, I will email you that picture. Thank you, Lisa. Yeah. Before I forget. Okay, there we go. Okay, so this is a, um, again, demo or move of an existing building and then a new building to take its place. Wall bang is um, in the Moreland's management district, but it's very close. This particular property is very close to um, the road. If you're going, if you turn after Bartlett, Bartlett Farm and you stay on that dirt road and you take a right, it's right it's pretty close to the, the farm itself. If you look, it's not in the, um, it's not close to the waterfront. There's a lot, there's some other, um, other houses out there that have white trim and et cetera that are in that area. Um, the current house that's being asked is going away is, um, we're not sure if it can be moved. We have it advertised. We haven't done any takers yet. That's the house that we're asking to take down. I think that, I can't remember what year it was. It looks like Neil Parent drew it. Steve Rothke, yeah. I wonder if that was just changes to it though. Somebody told yeah. me John Wraith had built it, which sort of yeah. surprised me because it doesn't look like a house that John Wraith would have built on the inside. And that's Neil's writing. Yeah. Madam Chair. I have yes. a date of 1991 from the NHL data. Thank you. Okay. 1991, there you are. All right, so what do you want to either the demo or move, right? Yeah, it'll likely be a demo if we can't get, if nobody's interested in it, but it, it is being advertised currently. Very good, thank you. Uh, Carrie. All I gotta say is it's weird that houses built in our career time are now being demolished. It's just weird. Um, it looks like it's in good shape and it's a big house. Um, and I'm shocked you can't sort of gut, renovate, add whatever without having to demolish. But built in the nineties, it's got no real significant value as far as I can see. So I'm not adverse to moving it or demoing it. It's just sort of sad. <laughs> it's, a, it's a usable house. Yeah. Uh, Stephen. Uh, thanks, Madam Chair. Yeah, uh, I agree with Carrie. I mean, just to add that there's so much need for housing. It's unfortunate there's not a practical way just to pick these things up and move them. We might yeah. need a couple of Hueys from the Vietnam era, and then we could start to solve the housing problem by moving these things. Thank you. Uh, Val. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's fine. I mean, it's, it is what it is. I get it. Um, it's too bad we don't have a s architectural salvage area to dump pieces of buildings and stuff that people could take out of them. Well, oh, we're, we're trying to create one. It went away. So it's in the works. Anyway, I am, uh, 
I am hoping for a move off or move on the property. Uh, it's not going to move on the property. They're in a, a district where they can cover 1,500 square. I mean, they, they're in the Moreland's management where um, they don't have the ground cover to move it. They can cover oh, okay. 800 okay. square feet. Well, I guess uh, without I special have... permits. So, you know, they can't sit and build another house. The demo, I would say aye. So, can I get a motion to approve the move or demo? So moved. All and right. and oh, go ahead, I'll let you guys vote. Sorry. Carrie? Aye. Stephen? Aye. And I unfortunately am an I also. I and just I'm want an to eye on my own motion. Yeah. <laughs> and I just want to say that we've had houses that we've built torn down. I know it, it feels, you know, so weird. It's weird, but you know, that's unfortunately. Hopefully the town will come up with a way that they can utilize these buildings to provide the housing that's necessary. Because people are really happy to give them up. It's just so hard to move these buildings and so expensive. Yeah. Yeah, I was, it's not just where to put them, it's how to move them. How yeah. to move them, particularly I this was, one. Yeah. I was going to make a discussion over the point of time to see if we couldn't get the truckers that move houses to give houses like this a half price instead of costing a hundred thousand dollars or whatever it costs. Oh yeah. I mean I think to move this one it would be over a hundred grand because it cost me a hundred grand to move a one gable small building from Sankity Road to, to Gray Avenue. So I bet this would be over, over much more than that. But it would be nice to have a conversation with them and see if there's any way of getting it down under what circumstances. Yeah, and that's just the thing I was thinking about. Yeah. Well, can't you see the uh, new dwelling? That this is the new done? dwelling. <laughs> so that is the north faces the driveway. That's the front door. Oh, very good. It's is uh, Stephen. Would you like to begin? Uh, sure. Can we go back to the uh, somewhere else? Yeah. The site plan? No. Are you driving, Lisa? No, I'm not. I'm just. You didn't say where you want to go. Yeah, yeah no. I, yeah, no. I I looked at the site plan. I'm good okay. on the. Uh, just start at the top of the elevations. Um. I think the overall perception is that the um secondary mass and the flanking uh the primary mass the flanking elements and the uh, secondary mass on the left seem a little tall but it's quibbly so um next uh page please no concerns on the next elevation down yep yep keep rolling can you knock it up three notches <laughs> It was good, thanks. A uh, little concerned about the overall amount of deck space. I appreciate that the uh, uh, that large dormer, which is broken up by the gable, I think that's an interesting way to do that. Uh, and I think it's effective. And I appreciate the fact. I think I was going to say, or I might have said that the meeting rails align with the eave. Um, I would want to measure out that deck space on the second floor as a nod to John. And uh, the next elevation, please. Yeah, I was good with that one. Um, I'm just wondering, is there that second floor roof? That, well, it it's a nice form from the uh, elevation above. It seems to be very aggressive here. And I don't, I'm wondering if a hip could be utilized, but I note that it's not really in the program. Well, I guess it is on the front covered porch. So not to be equivocating on what should or shouldn't be done. I'm just, you know, kind of voicing some mild concerns. Thank you. Can I ask you to define this for me more that are you talking about the left hand side of the roof? Yeah, the, the second, the yeah. second story. Yeah, just from this perspective it it seems aggressive 
over an open space. Right. It looks it looks unnecessary. So it's all right. right. So, yeah. Thank you. I just wanted to check it out with you. Thank you very much, Carrie. Yeah, I agree with Stephen. It's a good looking house, but this particular elevation, yeah, it just it 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 reads like it it would reduce the size of the roof by so much. Um, yeah. Go back to I think it is it the south that's facing. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I again I agree with Stephen in terms of the amount of decking, but out there, it seems like you know, it's open, it's really open space. And I just wonder what you'll see from, you know, the open area driving back towards that neighborhood. So can we look at the site plan again? Because this is in the same neighborhood that Val, you did that. Um, yeah, so that's, that's basically facing. It's facing the beach facing the beach so driving back I just don't know what kind of vegetation is out there sort of mitigating some of that long big elevation um, because it does read as quite a long block um, it's not tall elevation it's not it's, it's not I think uh, we do have a um, uh, well, that's actually on the other side of the property. Yeah, it's not. It's, it's there's certainly it's not tall elevation, but there's a lot of scrub. Yeah. yeah. So the first floor would probably be mitigated a bit, but not the second floor. Yeah, some yeah. of them seem really sort of hidden back there, um, but then some of them just sort of pop out like wow. Um, so I I might just want to drive by and see it. Um, that was what I was going to ask if we could view. Yeah. Okay, but I'll, I'll I'll take in uh, and I'll um but I'll also take into account the comments on that second floor um covered porch. I mean they would like a covered porch, but we can play around with some different roof lines to maybe make it less heavy. Thank All you. Right, let me get let me get Val's. Uh, Carrie, what, did you finish? Yeah, I'm good for now. Thank you. Okay, then Val. Uh, I would request a view. That's my comment. All right. I just want to say that I agree with what Stephen said about the roof on the east elevation. I appreciate the house. I think it is much more take, much more fitting in to Wallbang, which is sort of out in the dunies, uh, than what was there before. I just was wondering which where which is the front door? The front door faces um, away faces north. That's the front door. Okay, that's. I just want to see it, but I do appreciate the style of the architecture. I always thought that other house was awfully fancy for wall bang. But can I get a motion to revisions and a view? Yeah. So moved. Okay. Uh, Carrie. Aye. Val. Aye. Stephen, on your motion. Aye. And me, I'm an I also. Thank you. And let's see, we got more. Uh, we got. I think I'm. Oh yeah, let's do Catherine Waldorf. But I think I'd hold. If, if you're going to continue, I'm going to hold C days for a, a five member board. I think we're okay. done pretty soon. We yeah. we have now. I know I am. Wallbang is pretty easy, or uh, Maddox Sham Valley Road should be fairly simple, I think. Okay. Well, let's. Put that up now. This is uh, an addition on 54 Madikasham Valley. Yeah. So uh, the existing house it has a single story mass on the right hand side. She is an upside down house. She was hoping to add a master bedroom. Uh, so that is the second floor that you see um, on the uh, north and south elevations. Okay. Um, it is. I mean, when I go out there, I feel like I'm driving to the, the end of the earth. I'm not sure how many people drive to this location and where you actually see all this from, but um, that is the program. All righty. Well, let's start right away. Uh, Stephen. Yeah, I actually was out at the this end of the earth recently on an inspection, mm -hmm. and um, I think it's totally appropriate. Okay, thank you. 
Val. Yeah, I think for the most part, I agree with Stephen. Is there any way, Lisa, to just on the north drop like six inches that eave line just so it is not on the same line as the main part of the house? Um, I don't want to say no, but I, I'd have to look. Um, that yeah, would be my only. Probably comment. just on that elevation. Yeah, just so it reads more additive. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And if I I, I, uh, I can certainly agree to that. If I have an issue, I ju would just come back and just say we can't do it. We'll see okay. what everyone else thinks. They might yeah. not. So, did you want a view of this, or are we just going to have whole for? I have a comment. Okay. All I'm right. I'm just concerned that that sec the new second floor dormer is just like the other two. So it just reads as a long block. And I'm hoping that maybe you can do something to that dormer to change it up a bit. Maybe it's two small dormers or I, I don't know. It's just, that's the thing that the eave line being consistent doesn't bother me because the roof line comes down quite a bit, but it's just the nature of that dormer being exactly like the other ones is, yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. So, yeah. Stephen. Yeah, I would um, go ahead. To, I'm sorry, Madam Chair. Did you want to comment? No, no. I want to. I was going to make a comment after you. Okay. Uh, yeah. So I actually had commented, and uh, I do agree that if that on this side the salt box lower. Excuse me. On the north elevation, if the eave could drop six inches, that would help. And if the um, termination point of the shed dormer could be six inches or so below the ridge of the proposed add-on. Um, I would note that I'm not adverse to a change in the roof pitch there. I think that given its location um, and some of the other elements that it would be okay if it was slightly different. Um, but I think the solution would be overall just to move the um, primary mass, the eave line down. Thank you. Okay. Uh, what I would, what comes to my mind is splitting that dormer on the extension there. It's two small ones. You've got a lot of uh, cheek yes. line on the on all the sides, and it would you could therefore bring them down off the roof. And just my suggestion would be perhaps to think about making it smaller, make them that dormer smaller. Yeah, um, I could probably get a little bit of width out of it, certainly. But in terms of uh, breaking into two dormers, just programmatically, that's that's where the bathroom is. So, but I'll take a look at making it a little narrower, perhaps. What's the roof? Can uh, you drop it from the ridge too? Yeah. Yeah, I can drop it from the ridge because it is matching the other ones, but I could bring it down to a three. Uh, yes, you know, just slightly lower. Just that. Yeah, I oh. I wouldn't mind a little difference between the two uh, elevations, left and the right. So could a I get a motion for minor revisions? Thank you, Stephen. Uh, Val. Aye. Carrie. Aye. Even on your motion. Aye. And I'm an I two. Two meaning also. Great. Thank you guys. Thanks, Lisa. Have a good day. So what, what time is it now? It's 2.28. It's quitting time. Quitting yeah. time. All right. Well, that's all Other work to do. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Thanks, everybody. Oh, do you want to? Hey, Diane, why don't you carry it home? No, oh, that's right. I just was wondering if we had any uh, meeting notes to approve, but no. Uh, so, nothing to be approved today. Already. Adam, so, Vice Manager. Thanks. So, <laughs> and, anyway, we have just the, the last one we start on Tuesday of uh, Lisa's 27 Baxter Road. We yeah. got down to that. Okay. Okay. Oh, great. Okay. So are we ready to adjourn? I make a motion to adjourn. Very good. Thank you, Diane. On that motion, Stephen. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, Diane. Aye. 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 Thank everybody. 
Thank you, Val. Aye. Thank you, Carrie. Aye. I'm in favor too. Thanks, everybody. Uh, Thank you, you all. Bye. Good night. See you Tuesday. Yeah, see you Tuesday. Bye-bye.